Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Level Up Live. So excited to be with you here today. This is the show where we take music composers just like you. We take your tracks and we transform them. We level them up. We do that live here on YouTube. And over the course of the next hour, we're going to be taking a track. We're going to be producing it to make it sound the best it possibly can. Now today we are featuring composer Martin Agledahl, and he's here in the live chat with us. Say, what's up, Martin? We've got a bunch of others piling in here. So glad to have you here with us. And so over the next hour, we're going to be taking his video game music track. It's kind of in a snowy orchestral style. And we're going to take this loop, and we're going to make it the best it can be. Now right off the bat, you'll notice how um, the track we just played in with, this is called, let me get the official title, I don't want to mess it up, something about snow. It's called uh, The Village Clad in Frigid Snow. It's a really cool title, I like that a lot. And so, just to show you a little bit uh, behind the scenes of how we set this up and how we're going to work with this today, let's pop over to the folder that I have. And so, right here, we have... The MIDI tracks, now you could always send MIDI as one MIDI track that has all the tracks together, or just like this, you can take um, you know, separate MIDI files, which is fine, however you wanna do it. And then I also asked for the wave stems. So what he did is he took his track and he bounced them, every single uh, individual instrument as a different wave file, and that way when I import them into a blank Cubase session like this, you could certainly use any DAW you wish, but here I threw them into Cubase. And now I was able to create two different folders, a MIDI folder, which has all the MIDI information like that broken down, and then a stems folder, which is all WAV files. Now the purpose behind doing it that way is it allows us to have the ultimate control when we're working in a fast paced environment like this. This is what producers do. You can work either with the MIDI file to create a new instrument, a new VST to throw that MIDI information into, or of course we can um, just take the original WAV file. Now the only downside to this is the effects that came on the stem tracks, they don't translate over. So for example, at the very beginning of this track, you'll listen and you'll hear a delay in this really beautiful snow bells type sound. And so when I opened up the stems, if I open up my folder here and just play that section, uh, if I turn off what I did, notice how the delay is missing. So that's the very first thing that I wanted to fix. And so I went over to my mixer window and I found that file, found that track, and then I threw a stereo delay on there. I'm sure Martin will agree that that sounds pretty darn close. It's an eighth note, uh, a dotted eighth note delay of about 26% feedback and 50% mix. When you put that in, it sounds like this. I'm happy with that, and I think it's going to work just fine. And so, um, if you look at the entire section session here, the only other element that I feel like needs to be added right here at the beginning is a reverb track. And so um, with most DAWs, you can create what's called an aux track, which is an AUX track, an auxiliary track. It just means that you're going to take any of your tracks and you're going to send them to this auxiliary track. And whatever effect is on the aux track will be used across all of the tracks. It's a very great way to, uh, you know, to have resource management uh, so that you're not throwing a million different reverbs and having to control a lot of parameters. It's just a lot of less work. So the way to do that within Cubase is we create an effects track just like this, and it pops down here. And then if we go over to the left screen over here, all I do is take any of the tracks that I want to toss to that 2C Aether, which is this plugin here, my reverb, I put at 20 or I put at 15% of a, an orchestral halt. And what I've done is within my routing, my ins and outs, I just set the output of all the tracks we're working with here today. I set them as output to the effects uh, channel, which is the reverb channel. Quick way to do that within Cubase is the Q link button. And that way, whatever you have selected, you can select as many instruments as you want. If you uh, make an action, it'll actually do it to all of them at the exact same time. So that's a really huge time saver. 
you can do that in Pro Tools as well with the grouping function. Um, and this is one of those, a couple of those little features that I find incredibly useful with Cubase in particular, because it kind of takes the best of the audio editing world with the MIDI world. And that's why I use Cubase so stinking much. And I've been a, a big believer in it ever since I, I built a custom PC a few years ago. Uh, so anyway, back to the track here. Let's make some, some stuff happen. My goal is actually to use the MIDI as little as possible because when, when whenever it's possible, I want to try to maintain the integrity of the original track, the original sounds chosen. But there does come a point in time where maybe a piano sample or a string sample just isn't up to par. That's when I'll take the MIDI track and perhaps I might even play some of this in myself. But the goal is... Uh, by the end of this, we want to have a very polished track that could certainly be used in any video game. And the approach here today is I want to try and make this sound as realistic as possible because it's obviously in an orchestral style and I want the strings to sound as real as possible, the piano to sound as real as possible. So we're going to be talking about a lot of mixing and production tips here today. So hope this is valuable for everyone here. And of course, as you're piling into the chat today, let's, let's get a, an elbow cough in honor of this crazy season we're in, um, let's have some fun. So uh, what shall we do here? I feel like right off the bat, the, uh, I guess I should show off real quick before I get ahead of myself. Let's show what it sounds like with and without reverb because that was one of the elements I felt was missing. Um, so the reverb channel here, if I, let's see how I can do this. If I go over to my left screen and pop up the right screen on top of it, uh, if I go over to the reverb, which is kind of hiding under here, you can't see it, but if I take the reverb over here and let's turn it off. Let's listen to just a, a little chunk of the track without reverb. All right, pretty, pretty solid, but now let's turn the reverb back on with 15%. Let's go wild and go like, up, I don't know, 60%. Let's dial it back until we get a good amount. So my ears feel like 15% is good enough. That's a, it's a nice middle of the range. Usually 15 to 20% of reverb is all you need. You don't want the whole track swimming in reverb in an orchestral hall, um, but this gives us an opportunity to give a little bit of um, decay between our notes, especially melodic lines like the flute there. Now let's pop back over. The number one instrument to me that sounds off, that could really use a very quick update, it's going to be the piano. So what I want to do here is let's go over to the piano. We're going to mute that stem, but we're going to open up the MIDI. And I want to take this piano track and I want to create a new instrument. So let's do a new instrument. And I want to use Keyscape. That's my favorite, not always, but most of the time that's my favorite uh, realistic piano um, because it's a, a bunch of Yamaha C7 pianos or recordings of a Yamaha C7 in the studio. So if you go to the cinematic one, you're going to hear a huge difference. Let me get some actual notes here. Da, 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 da. Hey, wait a second. That's very, very similar to um, Studio Ghibli. That's very similar. And that makes me actually think of uh, Nausicaa in the Valley of the Wind. Anybody? That might actually... I think that's... I don't want to say plagiarism, but it's very close. Ha ha ha. Oh, interesting. Okay, Martin mentioned that the sample rate might be off. Interesting. Now I need to go on an adventure. You ready for this? 
<laughs> oh no, I think we may have just created a catastrophe. Um, this is one of the dangers of if you send wave files in a different sample rate, then they will actually sound different. So I want to make sure that we're doing this correctly. Before I go any further, so let me open up the original file that he sent. <laughs> Whoops. Let's see what that sounds like. Whoops. That's it. Alrighty then, you guys ready for an adventure? You ready for this? <sighs> Sounds to me like we need to, obviously we need to change the sample rate. So real quick, since Martin is in the chat with us, if you'll save us some time, can you let me know what the original tempo is supposed to be? And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna X out of here and I'm going to create Let's see how we how to do this. This is actually one of those times where Pro Tools is going to save our butt. And I'll show you exactly how I do that. And I love that Martin says, yeah, I've watched Studio Ghibli movies. So it wouldn't be weird if that influence is there. But he says, I haven't watched that movie. Well, uh, I think that's definitely in the ethos, right? Yeah, Nausicaa is a fantastic film. All of those films are fantastic. Um, beautiful mu music by Joe Hisaishi. Ah, so let's let's fix this, guys. So what I'm doing right now is, as I'm talking, I'm opening up a Pro Tools session. And what I'm going to do is throw all of the WAV files that, um, that Mark, haha, <laughs> thanks for subscribing to the channel. I'm not sure if you guys see that. I have a little Mario that jumps on the screen. I'm trying to get fancier with my, my skills. All right, check this out. So I'm in Pro Tools. Let's just do this really quick. Um, so you notice how I'm going to create a blank session of 24 bit 48 K. That's what I always ask for things in. We're just going to call that uh, pro tools conversion. So here we are blank session. This should be really quick. I'm going to do file import audio. Let me grab the stems that he gave me. Uh, let's take a second. La, da, da, ba, da, ba, da, da, ba, do, do, do. Maybe it's not Nasica. Maybe that's um, it's one of them. Everybody knows the tune. It's it's awfully similar, and I think it's a flute as well, which is why it makes it extra apparent. Uh, but yeah, I'm just I'm opening up my folder over here and looking for um, stems he just sent me. They're over here. So I'm going to take all these guys. You see them? I'm just going to select everything. This is one of the coolest things about Pro Tools. You take all the items. I can go to Convert Files and see this is what messed everything up. The files he sent were 44.1. And then I'm going to process all of them really quick. And this is the only amount of weight we're going to have to do here. Um, it's not the end of the world. Um, but what it's doing is it's taking all the 44.1 WAV files, converting them to 48. And then once I do a batch export from Pro Tools without even having to put them into the session, it actually goes to a clip file on the right, a clip um, menu. I'm going to export all of those and then import all of them back into Cubase and then all of the problems should be solved. So Martin, if you, uh, if you could please give me the tempo while we're doing this, that'd be fantastic uh, with the original. So anyway, right here, clip list is where I want them to go. And then I can open up the clip list on the side and that's it. I don't even have to throw them into the session or let them load. So I can just select everything, right click, go to export clips as files, and then put where I want everything to go. Um, and so I'm gonna throw them back into that same folder I had everything. And I'm sorry about the, uh, the extra bit of admin work here, but this is, this is real life stuff I do all the time. So the wave stems, I'm going to make sure that we create a new folder for 48K, which I'll show you where that is right there. Use current folder. And now all I have to do is let it do its thing. It won't take long because they're, they've already been processed. Now it's literally just pumping them into the right folder. It doesn't take long at all. So yay. 
Thankfully, that's a pretty easy fix. And cool. Thanks, Martin, for letting us know. Um, boom. And uh, Gory, I don't know if you can do this in Cubase. I just don't know. Um, Pro Tools has always been my go-to when it comes to uh, any kind of batch audio editing. I'm sure it's possible, maybe. Um, but I'm just not going to put my, I'm not going to bet on it. Okay, cool. So what I'm doing now, closing out Pro Tools, we have all of the 48K stems. Let me reopen the session for Cubase. Give that a second. Thankfully, there's no sample instruments in there, so that won't be long at all. Cool, cool, cool. And thankfully, it's nice to have a, a fast machine that loads everything pretty fast. Yes, sample rate is really, really important. Um, if you import the wrong sample rate into a session, so if, if you import 44.1k um, samples into a 48k session, which is what my audio interface is set to, it's what YouTube Live is set to right now, which is why I can't, I can't mess with that. That's what, that's the highest level I'm, I can have across the board. If I do that, then the samples themselves will slow down, or I guess they'll speed up um, to compress within the time difference. Because sample rate affects timing, and that's one of those uh, film things. If you ever work in film scoring, whew, don't mess that up. Uh, FPS, frames per second, you can also mess that up um, with your music. So here we are, we're back in Cubase. So I'm just gonna delete all the stems. Really easy fix. We're gonna create a new folder, call that stems make sure that it's its own folder i don't need a folder within a folder right now there we go um, and then i'm going to open up the folder where everything is at and just literally click and drag it's my favorite thing to do with cubase click and drag and it should work unless something's messed oh yeah i'll put them right there different tracks and there we are there's everything and now if I can just set my session to the new tempo, or I should say the original tempo, which is 130 instead of 142, because that's how much it sped it up. It's like a 10% increase. Now the MIDI should match perfectly. And here is what it's going to sound like if I do my stems. Turn the demo off. There it is. Oh, wait, you can't hear that yet. Because I closed out. Whoopsies. You will hear it now. Cool. There it is, guys. I think I just earned an elbow cough. I think so. So the only thing different that was not true earlier is I need to um, change the delay make sure I'm doing this correctly. So those are muted, those are soloed. Yeah, I need to put everything back to the reverb. So let's do that, let me show you that. If I hit Q-Link over here, it makes everything a group. So now I can just select all the things I want to send to reverb, put reverb as the output. Now they're all reverbized. So I'm gonna make that a word. And then, what am I forgetting? The delay on the bell track um, which is this one here I'm just gonna call them bells uh -huh -huh -huh, which is that track and then I'm going to put a stereo delay and let's see if that eighth note dotted eighth note will still get the job done let's do 25 percent 50 turn the left side off let's see if that does it all all right, now it does nothing because my reverb is off. There we go. There it is, everybody. Shazam. Cool. Now we can make some music. And there you go. That's just what you got to do sometimes when you're working with audio from other people. Always make sure that the sample rate is the same. And yeah, that's just life. That's a quick fix. All right, let's move on. So I wanted to work on the piano. I feel like the piano was not up to par. Thankfully, all the MIDI has stayed the same. That's the beauty of MIDI. It it stretches to whatever your tempo is. Uh, so I want to zoom in here. And this was the piano I was going to make. And I want to get these outside of the MIDI folder. 
like this. That way it's kind of its own thing. It's the beauty of folders. I can drag and drop stuff. And I want to copy and paste or yeah, let's just copy and paste. I don't want to cut anything. Um, so I'm copying, going to my sample instrument and pasting. And there it is. That's the piano. So for the piano, I was playing around with this earlier. Let's just find the actual notes now. Now that things are appropriate. I'm glad that you mentioned that, Martin, because I would have done this whole track, produced it at the wrong tempo and everything. So we're in the key of... Minor. I think your melody is one note off. You don't have the little hook. That would be Nausicaa, I believe. That's what, that's what I would do with it, but this is not my track. So, all right, that symbol gong thing is over the top. So let's find him, turn him down a lot, like 12 dB. Holy moly, it's so loud. Is that what it is, Princess Mononoke? You got it, you win. That's exactly what it is. Good job. So just know that, Martin, if you wanna change that melody a little bit, you might want to just because it's, it's freakishly similar. Just so you know, nothing wrong with it. It's a gorgeous melody. So yeah, I feel like this piano really needs some love because it's gonna be, um, let's do this. I'm going to hide, where is it? Hide selected track. So I'm gonna get rid of without getting rid of. I can always go back to my visibility tab and add stuff back in if I want to, but I just hit it, hit it so we can't see it while working. I'm going to take the keyscape virtual instrument and kind of throw it in its spot. So one of the cool features of Cubase as well, not that I'm not really trying to promote Cubase today, it's just there are some uh, unique features that I have fallen in love with, which have been so useful. If you hit this little solo button within a MIDI region, it will only play that solo instrument. So my only critique of the MIDI information is that it is the velocity control is exactly the same for the right and left hand. So I'm going to take just a moment. I'm going to make sure that the entire right hand for the entire track is beefed up a little bit. So I can do that down here within my automation. I'm going to take just I do that with a shift, by the way. I'm gonna take globally all of the right hand and pull it up. And that should help quite a bit with the voicing. I want to do the opposite by selecting all of the left hand and also just pulling it down a little bit more. And I can tell which ones are the left hand because they're all blue or they're all like a different shade. So I do the same global command, just draw them down a little bit. I think it's going to help make it more realistic. That is 
really beautiful. Good job. Nice pedaling as well, because the sustain pedal is already written inside the MIDI, which is why I wanted to keep it. Okay, um, next, let's work on the flute. So since you are here with us, I can ask you, Martin, do you want this to be a straight up orchestral flute or do you want it to be more Japanese, like a shakuhachi flute? What are you feeling? Um, I think we could really go the shakuhachi route and, and make it super ethnic. This is obviously a very Japanese inspired track. And if we wanna go all the, all the way, we can. I just want your blessing to experiment. Um, you just say woodwind flute in the track which I'm going to hide, by the way, hide. Let me open up the MIDI and let's find the flute. I'm going to do exactly what I did before by copying, getting out of there. Let's make a new instrument and let's experiment, shall we? So there's the flute. So here is what we're dealing with right now. I want to just try, if you'll allow me the moment. I want to take, okay, cool. He says, experiment away. I want to try, let's just start with the basic flute for now. This is the 8D Eau Claire woodwinds, which I believe are the best solo woodwinds in existence. They, they cost a pretty penny, but they're good. I'll take a second to load. Very, very powerful scripting here. So I'm going to turn up my close mic and allow my orchestral reverb, the 2C Aether in the background, my channel there, which speaking of which I need to route to before I forget. There we are. Just doing that in my mixing window. So here it is. <laughs> yeah, shakuhachi. Seriously, that's the that's the one you're using. It might just be the performance of it. Uh, let's go back and listen to that. Let's go. Let me. Uh, well, I guess I hit it, but let me go to the demo. I guess. Well, that's not gonna work. Let's go back to the demo just to hear the quality and let's see what's going on. That's so interesting that you literally use the exact same sample. Uh, it might be the performance. Something feels fake about it. Can, can I be honest? I think what it is is the lack of breath in the programming. Like that, that performer has no room to breathe. Breath. I don't know, I, I wanna experiment a little bit here. Let's save it. And mute it that way we can experiment and not lose anything if, if we don't like it um, I want to try an ethnic flute to be determined what um, let's experiment a little bit the first thing that comes to mind is I mentioned a shakuhachi not hoochie <laughs> shakuhachi <laughs> flute uh, let me just look what I got to work with here oh there it is the shire whistle yeah, that might be exactly what we need. This is from Invertone, I believe. Yeah. We 
like it. And this is the exact same style of whistle used for Lord of the Rings and Braveheart. So if it's good enough for them. And the reason this is an awesome sample is because not only is it, you know, scripted to be legato, but but it has portamentos scripted in when I play soft. And it also has um, ornaments. when I play a really hard velocity. That's so good. Let's do it. And let's throw that into the reverb. Yep, it is. Um, I think I just want to play it in, to be honest. Maybe we can... Come on, do you like that? Spot on. Let's take that sound though. Let's see what we can do with it's a little soft. I think we gotta get some scoopity scoops in there. So I'm gonna use the flute as a guide. And I would like to do this. Let's just keep those three instruments intact. So beautiful. Please tell me you agree, Mark. I love it. I'm gonna look at the, it's funny, I read sheet music, but I, I think I might read MIDI better. <laughs> like there's no way anyone should be able to read what notes those are, but I've just done this for so many years that I can actually read. It's, it's pretty stupid, but here we go. Scoobage. Like that. One more try. I think we'll have it.
I think also adding a little bit of pitch bend at the end. Kind of adds a lot of uh, depth and beauty to it. And yes, Chance, you are correct. Welcome to the stream. Using some beautiful Shire Whistle here to represent a flute line, which I feel like really adds a lot of depth to this. Let's put it in context and see how that feels. I have to change the mix a little bit. Let's try. Cool. So I just did a little bit of EQ and maximizing to get that uh, to get that instrument to shine a little bit more, to cut through the mix. And doing a bit more instrument changing, I think, is going to help this quite a bit. So I really love that, though. That's the heart of the, the tune right there. So let's take the flute track. Let's get him out of here so we don't get lost. And hey, um, Salar San, absolutely. You can um, hit me up at stevemalin.com slash level up if you'd like to be a part of your own level up live. Love doing these. All right, so there, let me take the, take the melody out. Let's see what we can do to help with all the percussion and stuff going on in the background. There's a lot. Here we go. I love it. That's super um, oriental uh, with this bass drum. So let's do some mixing here. That's going to help a lot to make some stuff fit a bit better. So here is the bass drum. I just need some EQ. I don't want to get rid of that. It's currently taking up way too much space. I'm just, I'm bumping that up to make it feel better. Okay, that's a really important part too. Let's get the gong going as well. It's very, uh, it needs to be compressed quite a bit. Right now, it's all over the place. Let's turn the volume back up, but then let's compress the snot out of it. As you can hear, it's it's pretty wild how strong that is. Fortunately, that sample is super peaked, so I can't even use it. But I can at least use it as a guide really quick. Let's open up a different kind of gong. I believe Saga by Red Room Audio has this in it. A ton of good perk. I'm looking for it right here. Gongs, there we go. 
They have some good gongs. Very loud and full. And it won't take up nearly as much headroom. Lots of scrapes. Shift high, low. I like that one. So we can use a tam tam or a gong. You know what? I have to go with my gut here. As much as I don't like using play, sometimes they do have the superior samples. Every once in a while, I think gongs is one of the few things that they really get right. Um, and that's the Symphonic East-West Library. So we go to Symbols and Gongs. They just have a stellar patch here for the Symbols one as well. It's very, very polished. You find a good gong in here. Like that, they're just big. Let that sucker ring. Okay, let's go to the next one. Hey, what's up, Carlos? One more gong. Cool, I like that a lot better. Also, it just gives a lot more space to do stuff. So I'm still going to EQ it so it doesn't take up way too much room like it has the tendency to. Really just leave it in that mid-range there. Pay back those samples. And I am going to really quickly quantize all of those two quarter notes, just so they, they're all on the grid. Let's make sure that it's in the reverb channel. Except we have the Celeste. I like it. it, just needs a lot more love in the EQ territory. Right now it's just very flat. Sounds like a doorbell. <laughs> Like that one instrument can use a lot more reverb to help simulate being further away in the orchestra, as they typically are. So I'll use the exact same reverb, but I'll just kind of double it up a little bit. Instead of doing it the reverb channel, I'll do a stereo out channel. That way I can just have more send to that one. Really what we want here is that mid-range, not the high. But a little bit of the high for the mallets. Here it is in context. I don't know, I'm gonna mute that track because I don't feel like it serves the melody. It kind of gets in the way. So let's move on, let's do some chimes. I guess these are wind chimes. I'm okay with that. It's a nice effect, some kind of thing. We just need a little bit of 
EQ love to make it fit. There's not a lot of them. It kind of helps create the environment. What else we got? Some big symbols. I'm happy with all of that. All oh, that sounds fine. Um, perhaps the strings? Okay, I feel like the strings are kind of weak, so let's do that for a second. Um, so I want to... Let's mute that track, get rid of it. And over here in my MIDI, let's grab the plucky plucks, which it looks like it's all one track, I think. So let's take that, get rid of him. Create a new instrument. For this one, for pizzicato strings, I like to use Adagietto. So for this, let's open it up. Let's go to orchestral, strings, ensemble, shorts, pizzicato. Must hurry and do great things. Come on, ensemble. A piece of gaddle. All right, this is a really cool patch. And I feel like it's going to nail it here. Well, that didn't do it at all. Arg. Okay, MIDI. Getting stuck here. Okay. Stems go away. I want the MIDI for pizzicato. There we go. There they are, right there. Okay, so I'm just gonna scroll down here, do that. It looks like we need a string pits base as well. Let's just duplicate that for right this second. Looks like the, I guess the other pits are for the higher strings. That's my assumption. So if I go inside MIDI, get the other pizzicato for the base. There we go. That should cover it. Now there's a lot of trash we're working with here. So let's solo those for a second. Let's get just the pits. Okay. Definitely, definitely a very Asian sound, right? Text. I like the pizzicato, but it's still too much in the way. I'm trying to clean that up. I'm 
must secretly have I feel like the flute is secretly playing in the background yep that's what it was bye bye flute oh it's just playing in the background that I don't <laughs> it's sneaking in there yep that's in there let me get rid of the um, Celeste get rid of the base there's just a little too much happening I want to make sure that I'm not doubling up a ton of stuff that doesn't need to be here. There we go. That's what was going on. There's just too many things playing at once. So there we go. That's what it should sound like. All right, we're almost done, guys. Let's work on the legato strings. I feel like that is still a little bit too much. Let's go over to the left screen for this one. Let's do that same technique we did earlier where we use the exact same reverb, but it's its own dedicated one. It says a lot more. Here it is. This needs a lot of EQ. Let's see. Yeah, I just can't get behind this this audio file. There's a lot of automation that I, I don't agree with. Uh, it's making it kind of choppy instead of lyrical and beautiful. So instead of that, let me just open up a new patch. I should call it uh, Strings Legato. And let's take the MIDI file. This is exactly why I have this here. Let's take the MIDI file of strings to this guy here. And let's go down to strings legato. There it is. And I want to open up for this one as we're kind of coming to a close here. I want to try. I want to try some contorino strings from Adagietto, the same thing we used earlier. So let's go to ensemble long, but we're going to do sort of, uh, sustain sordino because the melody just needs to hit us in the face. Um, and I don't like when it gets buried because of the background instrument, the strings. So let's get the volumes up to par with the far mic and close mic, but then we're going to turn down. I don't have to EQ it because it already has a mute on it. That's what concertino means. Turn that patch down. Let's see how that might make a difference. a different patch that was close it's i think it's better but not not the best it can be i want to try low agria which is albion 2 from spitfire um i want to try mixing two patches the highs and the lows but i want to do the still the muted strings uh but these are just a lot more subdued of a sound and it's going to have a little bit more um of a beautiful sound instead of what that was so i want to do concertino so they're they're technically whole notes It'll script them. Let's do a little bit of close mic, a lot of tree mic. Do this for both of the patches. And that should create a nice little blend. If I had the MIDI for every single instrument, I'd probably just create legato patches for all of them and stack them. But we don't have that, so let's work with what we have. Let's see if that makes a difference. I think it's going to, especially if I ride the mod wheel like this. And you can see how the dynamics, these guys right here, are going up and down. So with that, I think it's going to be a good idea. Let me turn the volumes up to where they should go. 
and I'm going to get all that back to normal. Let me ride the mod wheel and see what happens. Here we go. here I need to take I like it I just need to extend these notes a lot and I think this might be a situation where I can blend all three of those patches together so let me take the adagietto let's put them all in there at the same time so give it the most warmth possible this might also be a good idea to throw the original patch I don't have to get rid of it completely just kind of put it really quiet in the background. So here's these three all together. Cool. Uh, I like that a lot more. And let me take the original file, the stem here, because I got rid of it. Take the legato, which is this guy. Let's throw him in there as well. Just so we have the original, we can turn him down a ton. I'm gonna call it the OG original. We're gonna turn that down a ton, but still put it through the same reverb in my mixing window. Let's see what those two mixed together sound like. Should be really nice. Beautiful. Good, except right here. I like that. And at the very end there, I want to kill the pedal of the piano right here. That way it doesn't extend into the loop. I'm not even sure if you wanted to make this a loop or not, but it can be. It will work as a loop. I feel like maybe it needs to go for one more bar. And this final note is a little too abrupt for me. Let's make the... First of all, let's make the loop go all the way to there. And we're gonna take the velocity of these guys and just drag them down a little bit. Probably do the same thing here. There it is. So the final element here before we wrap it up is I'm going to go to my master track 
And I'm going to add a little touch of ozone. I'm going to put that, let me rearrange these a little bit. I guess it should go like that. And ozone, the mastering suite, really solid. If you use it very subtly in this context, I think it's gonna work just great. Let's do a preset of something that is perhaps a bit more mid-rangey. Actually, let's do stereo, enhanced stereo image. I think that's gonna be a good one for this. So here it is without any tweaking at all. You can hear a big difference. But let's tweak it to our needs. The only last thing I'll do here is, is let's take the bells, let's tame those down a little bit. They're, li they're super fake sounding, which is okay. It's a nice effect. We just gotta tame it down a lot. Let's also add Valhalla Shimmer onto that, just to give it a chorus reverb, which is nice and fat and wide. Helps it to bounce around a little bit more. Here it is with those two elements combined. There it is, now it's warm and bouncy. Strings are nice and lush. I'll turn down just a hair because the ozone bumps them a lot. Cool. I'm very happy with that. Well, cool. Thank you so much, guys. It's all the time we have for today. And I feel like this has been a huge success. Uh, thanks to Martin for supplying the track. Um, so this is the village clad in frigid snow, the level up live version. And as mentioned before, if you'd like to have your own level up live, go to stevemalin.com slash level up. And you can get some more information about how to have your own just like this. It's been a lot of fun. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Uh, make sure you set your clocks for tomorrow at 1230 Eastern Standard Time. Going to be doing another live stream tomorrow in place of my normal 10 a.m. upload. Tomorrow I'm going to be sharing my top plugins and sample instruments that I use for every single category. So woodwinds, brass, strings, choirs, pianos, mixing plugins. You guys see me use them a lot here, but it's gonna be the first time I've ever done a full dump. It's gonna take about an hour and a half to do it, but I'm gonna go through every single section and show you the pricing for each, how to use each of them, and really just the um, my favorites of every single category. And it's gonna be a ton of fun. Hope you'll join me for that tomorrow, 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm excited to share this track. So once again, this is the Village Clad and Frigid Snow Level Up Live version from Martin Agledahl. Thanks for hanging out. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Let's listen to it. <laughs>